A forester without the knowledge of wildlife is only half complete. To that effect, 53rd RR of the Indian Forest Service headed to the heart of India, the land of diamonds and the abode of the striped monk, Panna, for a 10-day long wildlife techniques and management plan exercise. After her arrival, the evening began with a briefing by the faculty, officers of PTR and Dr. Ramesh, the key resource person for the exercise. Early morning starts became the order of the day with 6.30 am being the standard time. The first of many field visits began with a tour to understand and qualitatively assess PTR core. We split into groups so as to cover the length and breadth of the core area. As we straddled the Ken River, we began to catch glimpses of the various fauna inhabiting this area. Our first major stop was Dhundua Falls, a semicircular cliff that dropped off more than 100 feet into the abyss below. It was home to six resident species of vultures and the roosting site for two migratory species. It was at the base of these falls that the success story of Panna was written, with the reintroduction of T1 tiger in 2009. As we pushed further into the wilderness, we began to track signs of movement of wildlife, such as pug and hoof marks, claw marks on tree bark, scat, among others, giving us a taste of working as a wildlifer. The turnaround point for the day was Gehri Ghat, a small but spectacular waterfall that will unfortunately be submerged once the Kane Betwa link becomes operational. As the sun headed towards the horizon, we returned to base for a debriefing and briefing for the next day's activities. Wild animals are meant not to be seen, yet they leave several traces of their presence. For that, today we started on a science survey to gather baseline data on animal distribution and relative abundance in Panna Core. Every group of six covered two to three beats, walking three kilometers in each. This was followed by deployment of camera traps at suitable locations by the probationers. The afternoon activity was interesting as it involved live demonstration of animal rescue and rehabilitation, specifically snakes. Some of us even mustered up the courage to practice snake handling ourselves. A new daybreak, another sortie into the jungle. The task at hand today was to conduct a line transect through the allotted beat on foot. This is an important exercise to determine the prey base as well as to qualify the vegetation found in that particular region. Our encounters with wildlife were at very close quarters here and we were fortunate enough to not chance upon the apex predator on foot. While technical inputs and analysis poured in after every field visit, they were interspersed with expert lectures too. The next tool was the vehicle transect, wherein the prey base estimation was done for a larger swath in a vehicle where we covered nearly 20 to 25 kilometers through the core area. The early bird catches the worm, and that is true, as birds are quite active right after dawn when they feed on the insects. Today, 
We started a little early to be part of this action and carry out a bird count exercise including description of the vegetation. As we homed in on the GPS points allocated to us, we spotted quite a few birds such as the Sarkir Malkhoa and the lesser adjutant stock, even as we disturbed a sloth bear who had been quite engrossed in its morning breakfast activity. And as fate would have it, today was the day we spotted the king himself, P243, walking in all its majesty on the jungle road without a care for the lesser mortals around it. A little bit on the naming aspect is needed here. P243 stands for progeny of T2 and the third cub in the fourth litter. One would think that any other activity in a tiger reserve would be quite anticlimactic after a tiger sighting. But more excitement was in store for us later in the day when we were exposed to mock-ups of wildlife crime related scenarios and asked to investigate and share our findings. A special session on human-elephant conflict followed which was succeeded by a briefing for the most anticipated night of the tour, our stay in the anti-poaching camps within the core area. While no one reported any untoward interaction with wildlife during the night, it was a humbling experience in itself seeing the hardships that the frontline staff go through to do their duties. As the skies turned lighter, we headed off into the field for a morning patrol and demonstration of the M-Stripes application, showcasing how technology can be used for effectively monitoring wildlife even in remote areas. The afternoon was also filled with demonstration activities, firstly the use of drones in forest and wildlife monitoring and second the use of trained dogs for tracking of illegal wildlife items as a deterrent to poaching. After the Belgian Malinois showcased its sniffing skills, we headed to Majgama, the only diamond mine in the country, to study its effect on the surrounding forests and wildlife. It was also an important lesson in stakeholder interaction where we put ourselves in the shoes of the stakeholder, here, employees of NMDC and the locals, to understand the need to balance development and conservation. As per our mentors, we had observed the animals enough. It was now time to observe tourists and their behavior. We spent the morning in the sections open for tourists seeing all the good and bad practices in vogue. This was also a time when we realized that we had come far from just identifying animals or their signs to understanding their behavior and their calls. We had come a long way in one week. The day only turned better with tea infused with one tulsi during the break along with a visit by additional director sir who reviewed our progress in the exercise. This was followed by a visit to the tiger release enclosure where we learned the story of tiger loss and reintroduction in Panna and how it turned into a success in only 10 years. This was followed by a brief lesson in grassland management and its importance in prey based management. With data collection behind us, it was now time to sit down and write the management plan. Every protected area has a management plan detailing the various activities to be undertaken to manage it effectively. 
While we had dispersed across PTR in 11 groups, this leg of the tour would involve sitting down and sharing data, observations and insights on the various topics divided amongst us. This was carried out using innovative activities such as cross-pollination across groups, discussions and often debates between the members. A big part of wildlife conservation is understanding the community and its engagement. We were exposed to the local culture through the Bundeli dance called Rai, that is, Seeds of Mustard, which was performed by enthusiastic artists who kept us on our toes with their acrobatics. As we continued our discussions the next day, we now shifted to another important aspect which is the impact of big projects on protected areas. With the Kane betwa link proposed to come up in the future, we visited the site of the proposed dam to understand its implications. In this, we were assisted by senior engineers who are part of the project. Before our visit to the site of the Dodhan Dam, we also visited another British era dam called Gangau Dam to observe its impact on freshwater habitat fragmentation. Next was a visit to Dodhan village and interaction with the villagers to understand their needs and the challenges of village relocation due to submergence. Stakeholder interaction continued even as the management plan was beginning to take shape and it was a discussion with the local eco development committee or the edc that was next while most of us headed to khajuraho next door to witness the splendid architecture of this unesco world heritage site several others stayed back and retrieved the images from the camera traps that we had placed here are a couple of them from a trap near the river As the darkness grew, our brainstorming sessions continued on the recommendations part of the plan on the penultimate night. We had reached the end of an enriching exercise and the PTR team, including Director PTR, hosted a lunch for us on the last day in Panna. We could not thank them enough for the opportunity and the experience that we had received in the past 10 days on and off the field. It was arguably the most interesting tour away from Dehradun till date. As we head to Jabalpur, we cannot forget the efforts put in by Dr. Ramesh and his team from Wildlife Institute of India, who handheld us throughout our journey. We are also grateful to Amit Kumar sir, faculty IGNFA, and Dr. M. Sudhagar, course director, for being our mentors on this exercise. Though we leave Panna today, the striped monk continues to watch us, even as we train to be its guardians and protectors outside. Thank you. Jai Hind.